Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. In this channel, previously we have discussed about pitchot radinomas. In one of the video, we discussed about pitchot radinoma in general and in another one, we discussed about prolactinoma. In this video, we shall discuss about another type of hormone secreting pitchot radinoma called as growth hormone secreting pitchot radinoma. Do make sure you watch this video till the end so that you get complete information about this condition. Pituitary adenomas can be functional that is secreting excess amounts of one or the other hormones or non-functional that is without any active hormonal secretion by the tumor. This has been explained in detail in this video. Growth hormone. As the name suggests, this hormone has an important role in the growth of an individual. But in addition to this, it also has multiple other functions like these. Excess of growth hormone in the body can result because of multiple conditions like these. But in this video, let us only consider excess of growth hormone in the body because of a pituitary adenoma secreting growth hormone. That is a growth hormone secreting pituitary adenoma. These adenomas can secrete either only growth hormone or sometimes growth hormone along with prolactin. As we all know, height of an individual increases only up to a certain age and not beyond that, right? Why does this happen? That is because the bones in the hands and the legs called as the long bones have something called as growth plate. This growth plate fuses at a particular age and beyond that there cannot be any increase in the height of the bone. If there is increased amount of growth hormone in the body because of pituitary adenoma before the closure of the growth plate then it results in abnormal increase in the height of that individual obviously along with many other features. Now these individuals look abnormally tall and giant and that is why this condition is called as gigantism. On the other hand, if there is increased growth hormone in the body after the closure of growth plate, then it cannot lead to any increase in the height of that individual. However, all the other features would still be there. Now these patients will have abnormal increase in the size of the hands and feet because of soft tissue enlargement and that is why this condition is called as acromegaly. The external features of acromegaly are these. Excess of growth hormones in the body also cause variety of internal abnormalities like macroglossia or large tongue which would obstruct the airway especially during sleep causing a condition called as obstructive sleep apnea, snoring, diabetes, hypertension, various heart related problems which can sometimes be very fatal, various nerve entrapment syndromes like carpal tunnel syndrome about which we already discussed in this video. Uh, joint pains, arthritis, myopathy causing easy fatigability and muscle pains or sometimes it can even cause liver and kidney failures. When we talk about growth hormone, we need to understand another very important word that is somatomedin C or insulin like growth factor 1 or IGF-1. IGF-1 is synthesized by the liver and is released into the bloodstream. This process of releasing into the bloodstream is stimulated by growth hormone. In other words, growth hormone does all its functions in the body through IGF-1. So naturally, conditions where there is excess amount of growth hormone in the body also lead to increased amounts of IGF-1. An interesting thing to note is the ratio of IGF-1 to growth hormone gives a very good idea about the metabolic activity in the body. A low IGF-1 to growth hormone ratio 
is associated with abnormal glucose tolerance in acromegalic patients. Surgery is the treatment of choice. As discussed previously in this video, surgery can be done either through the nose that is transnasal transphenoidal approach or by opening the skull that is transcranial approach. Your neurosurgeon will decide which is the best suitable approach to your tumor depending on multiple factors. After the surgery, there is usually a rapid improvement. The first change that the patient usually notices is the change in the feel of his hands and feet, especially the roughness which was previously there goes off. All the other changes slowly get corrected over next few weeks to months. However, it is very important to note that abnormal increase in the height in case of gigantism will not come back. Well, to call it a cure, growth hormone level should come down below 5 nanogram per ml. While there are other criteria too to call it a cure, they are these. Well, coming to the medical treatment, octreotide and bromocriptin are the most commonly used drugs uh, in the treatment of growth hormone secreting pituitadenoma. But as mentioned previously, surgery remains the mainstay of treatment and these drugs are used especially in cases of residual tumor after the operation or in uh, some conditions where the patient is not fit to undergo a major operation because of his uh, overall general condition. Now, how does this octreotide act? The release of growth hormone by the pituitary gland is inhibited by a hormone called as growth hormone inhibiting hormone or somatostatin. This octreotide is a somatostatin analog or in simple words, octreotide is a synthetic somatostatin which inhibits the release of growth hormone in the body. While how does bromocriptin works? This has already been discussed in this video. A few newer drugs of the octreotide category are landriotide and pacirotide. Another experimental drug is called as pegvisomant. Now how does this act? It basically prevents growth hormone from doing its function. That is in medical words, it is a growth hormone receptor antagonist. The most important limiting factor for the medical treatment of growth hormone secreting pituitary adenoma is its cost. That is these drugs are really really expensive and may not be affordable to most of the patients. Another treatment modality is radiotherapy which can be either conventional or gamma knife therapy and mainly used for cases where there is a residual tumor following surgical excision. So these were a few important points about this not so uncommon condition that is a growth hormone secreting pituitary adenoma. If you found it useful make sure you give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends and family and for more such informative videos subscribe to this channel. Thank you for watching.